How's it going boys? Johnny Superb Man here and today I want to talk a little bit about the NHL 15 quick review video that I released a few days ago. You know that video, it generated a lot of talk, a lot of discussion, a lot of controversy which was the whole point. You know I wanted to raise awareness about this game and I wanted to voice my opinions and I wanted to see what you guys had to say as well. So I thought I'd do a video, this video, where I respond to a lot of the top comments in that video. Okay, I thought I'd take some time out and do that. So if anyone's uh, expecting like an entertaining video, you know this is not that kind of video. There's there's not really much going to be going on in the background either. I'm just going to talk and respond to a lot of the comments from that NHL 15 quick review. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the comparison that I made between Minecraft and NHL 15. You know, I don't think a lot of people understood what I was talking about when I compared these two games. I mean, if you look at some of the comments, you make a lot of valid points, but comparing Minecraft to NHL is like comparing apples to a refrigerator. I don't see how you can compare Minecraft to NHL 15 or vice versa. They don't correlate at all. Horrible how you can even compare Minecraft to NHL 15. Why do you think it reacts so fast, Johnny? Oh wait, I know, because it looks the way it does. Alright, so the reason I compare these two games is because it's not like comparing apples to a refrigerator. I mean, apples a damn fruit, refrigerators a man-made object to keep food cold. These are both video games. They're both games that are played by individuals. And what I like about Minecraft is that they focus on gameplay while sacrificing presentation. I agree. I, I think the reason why it goes so fast is because of the way it looks. Fine. But the reason it's one of the most popular games in the world is because the gameplay is fun. It's immersive. Where NHL 15, they focus on presentation and says, screw it to gameplay. I don't care if the game is slower. It looks better. And to me, that is the wrong formula to create a good game. That's the comparison I was making. Minecraft is fun to play. And it plays better than it looks. NHL 15 is it's it's a chore to play, and it looks better than it plays. Next comments. Good video, Johnny. EA is completely incompetent and should be ashamed of themselves. Was no one fired over this complete failure? EA sold out their core fans to get more casual sales, and look how that turned out. Worst sales in like a decade. They take out the best mode and prioritize a cash grab scam called Hockey Ultimate Team, and take the horrendous AI and turn it into the worst AI in all of video games. We are so unlucky as hockey fans to have such incompetent retards who don't listen to their fan base making NHL games. Hashtag fire rammer whoo i can feel the rage in this comment and i gotta admit there are some times where i feel the exact same way but i think we should all step off of the uh fire rammer crap you know or the fire the developer crap just because i don't think it's their fault you know in my videos if you listen i never single out sean ramjeg sing i never single out the developers i always say ea like for example ea you drop the ball because in my opinion the buck stops somewhere in that company and we can speculate who it is right i don't care who it is all I know is it's somewhere in that company. So let's let's turn our focus to EA as a whole instead of individual. So instead of hashtag fire rammer, let's go hashtag EA fix your game. Next comment. And this one I'm going to go through point by point just because it is quite long. Johnny, I really respect you speaking your mind. As I agree, the game is subpar for sure, but have several major gripes with this video. Number one, you were offered to come to Toronto 30 minutes from your house to speak to Rammer himself with myself and many other YouTubers to offer suggestions for the game. You declined. All right, so, you know, first, I mean, I don't know how much of a gripe that is towards my review video as much as it is a gripe towards myself. I mean... Are you insinuating, had I been at this event, I would have been able to all of a sudden change NHL 15? This event was on September 4th. The game was released September 9th. What kind of input could I have possibly had at this point? All right. Um, also, you know, it's not 30 minutes away from my house. It's more like 60 minutes with good traffic. Um, another point is that I was busy on the 4th. I was busy creating content for my YouTube channel. If you guys remember, I had like five NHL videos out on the 4th. I had another five out on the 5th. I was busy on the 4th, and that's why I didn't show up. All right, and also, you know, these events are not set up for you to go with, to speak to Ram or to change the game. When I say I want to go to Vancouver, I want to sit down with the developers and have a conversation. I want to sit down with two or three of the main players and have a conversation with them. These events, they're more like tours. You're, you're in a group of guys, and you go from point A to point B to point C, being led around by an EA representative, and saying, hey, look at this, hey, look at that, hey, look at Morgan Riley and Patch Ready doing motion cap. And then you get to test out the game at the end, and maybe there's a Q&A session in there, right? But it's very awkward. 
there's all these people listening to you. That's not what I'm talking about when I say I want to go down and talk with the developers. That's completely different. This event was more like a promotional event for the release of NHL 15. Number two. You claim that EA is only in it for themselves, yet you openly stated that you only play on next gen to get paid. Alright, you're all over the place now. And here's another gripe that I think is more towards me than the video that I made. I mean, you claim that EA is only in it for themselves. Well, of course they are. They're a business. They're trying to make money. I have no problem with that. I said that satisfying their loyal customers doesn't seem to be that high up in their priorities. Alright, because... They'll still make sure that Hockey Ultimate Team is ready day one with the transactions. They'll still make sure that the game comes out on time. They'll still make sure to have all the advertisements in the game. They'll still make sure to take advantage of the cover vote every single year. This is what I mean. They, they, they prioritize other things above satisfying their loyal customers, right? To satisfy their loyal customers, they have to create a good game. They don't do it. And then you try to compare EA to me in the same sentence by saying, yet you openly stated that you only play on next gen to get paid. Well, yeah, I treat my YouTube channel like a business. It's my job. I want to get paid. I value making money, guys. I mean, I'm 26 years old. I have bills to pay. I have people to support. All right. And I know I have loyal customers, loyal viewers, loyal subscribers that want to see me play NHL on next gen. So it's a win win. I'm the one who has to take the bullet because I don't like playing it, but I will get paid for doing it, which helps me, and it will also create content for my loyal subscribers, so I don't see how there's a comparison there. Number three, you also claim that EA is unprofessional for having spelling mistakes in their game, yet you typed Ariana's instead of Arena's at the end of this video. Alright, I think you're a little bit confused just because I didn't say that they were unprofessional. Let's go back and listen to exactly what I said. Why should I have any faith in your ability, EA, to program competent computer AI when you can't even spell check things? Why should I have any faith in the AI when my first OTP game froze? Why should I have any faith in the AI when the game doesn't even show the stats in my season mode 20 plus games in? I'm supposed to believe that you guys can program complicated cr creative computer AI when you can't even accomplish the basics? No. The AI in this game is of the same quality as the rest of the game. Looks good, plays like crap. So you see, I'm not saying that they're unprofessional, I'm saying I have no faith in the computer AI when there are glaring mistakes in every other aspect of the game. When there's something as simple as spelling mistakes in a game, why should I believe that there aren't mistakes in the coding that goes into the computer AI? That's the point I'm trying to make. And also, it seems like number three is another gripe towards me than the actual video that I made. I mean, just because I make a spelling mistake doesn't change the facts that I promoted in the video. Because I spelled arenas, arianas, doesn't change the fact that Hockey Ultimate Team is slower than it was in NHL 14. And again, if you're going to compare a YouTuber's stupid little review of NHL 15 to NHL 15 itself, then I mean, you got me. But Jesus, I, I, I hope there's some people out there who can see the difference. Number four. EA has offered you more promotion and help than any other YouTuber. In my opinion, it's well deserved. You've earned it over the past several years of hard work. However, to go on and make that erroneous turd analogy and take cheap shots at EA really took it too far in my opinion. Kind of like biting the hand that feeds, you know? Alright, so at least this gripe has to do with the video. He didn't like the turd analogy. Um, before we get to that, first of all, you know, the way that you set up this statement, I don't agree with. I mean, EA has offered you more promotion? EA came to me because they saw the tutorial videos that I was making and they wanted those specific tutorials for their YouTube channel and for their website. I had something to offer them and they had something to offer me. They get these videos made for them because they either don't have the time and the resources to do it themselves and I get free advertising. That's our business relationship. I haven't received a single penny from EA, all right? It's just simply I make the videos that they want and I get the advertising, all right? And also, do you remember my Hercules check video? That video got seen all across Canada, from Sportsnet in friggin' Ontario, Montreal, to the satellite hot stove in Vancouver, alright? That's a video that a YouTuber made that just gave EA a free advertisement across all of Canada. EA then took my Hercules Check video and made a spoof of their own video, and monetized that and made a quick buck. All because of a YouTuber's stupid little video. They see the value in YouTubers, alright? So we have a business relationship. I treat my YouTube channel like a business, and therefore, I receive business opportunities, alright? They haven't offered me anything. And when it comes to the erroneous turd analogy and take cheap shots at EA, you know, if you watch the video, man, I didn't take cheap shots at EA. I took cheap shots at the product that EA sold to us. 
All right, they sold us this game for $70, and therefore, I'm going to make fun of it. And by the way, this is a YouTube channel. I'm trying to be funny. I'm trying to make it a little bit comedic, all right? And obviously, I, uh, I hit a pressure point with the turd analogy. It worked, and I still stand by it, by the way, all right? I will say this, NHL 15 is a golden piece of shit. All in all, I agree with much of what you said. I also dislike the game and think it has way too many flaws. However, you could show a bit of respect for a company that has helped you oh so much along the way. We're all frustrated with EA. Who knows, maybe you're a genius and this over-the-top video is what EA needs to see to step up their game. I suppose only time will tell. Alright, so in this entire comment, I really only got one major gripe, and it was the disrespect that I showed EA with the erroneous turd analogy. Well, you know what, man? I'm not employed by EA, and this is what I do. I speak the truth. I don't pull any punches. If I were to sugarcoat things, people would lose respect for me and my credibility would go down the drain. Now, a year, two, three years when a good NHL game comes out and I say, oh my god, this game is amazing, go out and buy it right now, people are going to believe me because they know I don't sugarcoat things. So this is what I do on my channel, alright? And I'm also trying to make it entertaining for you guys, alright? And also, you know, when you say things like, um, a company that has helped you out oh so much along the way. I mean, if you really want to get into a technical argument about it, they really took a big shit on my face this year because the less people buying an NHL game, the less potential viewers there are for me to take advantage of on YouTube. Correct? The more people who buy the game, the more potential viewers all the NHL YouTubers have. So this game, this year, has actually hurt every single person who makes NHL videos. Next comment, you guys who spend money on ultimate team packs are what make me sick and enable companies to take advantage of you and find more ways to take your hard earned or borrowed cash. Ooh, pray for eyes cut deep with this one. Um, you know, back in NHL 13, I definitely had this kind of mindset because I felt in NHL 13, they really screwed over the $60 player. You know, they, the $60 player could not compete in hockey ultimate team, but I've retracted that statement in the last two years just because I do feel like if you just buy the game, at least you can compete in Hockey Ultimate Team. But, uh, you know, he does have a point. The more and more money they make from Hockey Ultimate Team, the less and less they'll put into other game modes. And it is a problem. Next comment. Hockey Ultimate Team isn't the most popular game mode. LOL. So he's being sarcastic. He's saying that Hockey Ultimate Team is the most popular game mode. Alright, so I won't be able to disprove that. I know I said in my review that it's not. But, uh, you know, I don't have any facts on front of me, so you got me. But just hear me out. This is my mindset. Every Hockey Ultimate Team game that's played online, you know, that's two players in an online game. Every 6v6 EASHL game that's online, that's 12 players in a game. So that's almost like six Hockey Ultimate Team games in one based on the players who are playing an online game, all right? So add up all the 6v6 games, which equals six Hockey Ultimate Team games. Add up all the 5v5 games that equal five. Add up all the 4v4, the 3v3, the 2v2. Add up all of those total online games played together. Then take OTP, because I consider OTP and ESHL to be in the same category. It's the online be a pro. One is ranked with clubs, one is unranked with uh, regular people, or not regular people, but just random people, right? But you still have to add up all the 6v6 OTPs, the 5v5s, the 4v4s, 3v3s, 2v2s. Add them all up and put them together with the ESHL total games played. Then also take into account the online leagues that are created on separate websites for the online be a pro game modes. Have you guys ever heard of the LG League? Now, I haven't played in it just because I wouldn't be able to show up on time, but this thing is massive, all right? They make teams, they have drafts, they have salary caps, they have scheduling, they have three different leagues, the NHL, AHL, CHL. They record all the stats, they have rules. This thing is massive. And to say that these game modes can just be taken out of the game because Hawk Ultimate Team is the most popular game mode and that's all any NHL player wants to play is bullshit, you know? I won't be able to say for a fact that these game modes are more played than Hockey Ultimate Team, so fine, I concede that point, but the numbers are very close. I guarantee you that, all right? The online Be A Pro numbers are very significant, and in my opinion, what made the NHL franchise were the two pillars. You had the Hockey Ultimate Team pillar, and you had the online Be A Pro pillar, which had the ESHL and uh, OTP. And when you remove the online Be A Pro pillar, the structure collapses. Next comments, and these ones make me feel really sad. I mean, the first one, I couldn't agree more, Johnny. Sometimes when I'm bored playing NHL 15, I'll go into practice mode and just screw around. It's fucking sad. <laughs> it might seem lame, but I only play GM mode. See, 
This is the example of gamers who just want to play a fun NHL game, all right? I feel the same way, guys. When I have free time and I'm thinking, ooh, I want to play some hockey, I don't even think about going to my Xbox One. I go to my 360 because there are actually game modes that I can enjoy offline and online on the 360 versions. It's ridiculous, I know. Next comments. Sometimes I type shaking my head in my online interactions to imply I disagree with something. However, this time I was literally shaking, scratching my head, listening to this. So this guy disagrees, I guess, with my whole video instead of pointing out a point. So I don't really know what to go off there, man. I guess you just disagree with everything I said. And the next comment, I respect the hell out of you, man, but sometimes you really confuse me. You're entitled to your opinion and all, but sometimes I just don't get it. Again, I don't know what they're talking about, the entire review or just something specific. So I'll try to just sum up my entire review in one sentence for you guys. Basically, NHL 15 is a presentational upgrade, but a gameplay downgrade. Next comment. Don't worry, NHL 2K is coming back in NHL 2K 16. I don't know if that's true or not. If it is, that sounds awesome because that's one thing that will motivate EA if their wallets are about to get a lot smaller. Hell yeah. But here's a compliment for Electronic Arts. I remember playing NHL 09. I remember playing NHL 2K 9. And I chose NHL 09 by Electronic Arts as my favorite hockey game in that year. All right, so I've already picked EA over 2K. I'm still with EA, but I still think it's a great thing for hockey video games in general if there is competition out there. Next comment. Also, I love you, but when you say you don't play for fun, you play for the money. As a huge fan of you, I think you've lost all the respect. I'm very disappointed with that comment. All right, I never said I don't play hockey games for fun anymore. I don't play NHL 15 on current gen for fun at all. When I have free time and I want to play a hockey game, I go straight to my 360. I'd rather play NHL 15 on old gen because the game is a hundred times better. All right, that's what I'm saying. But I know I have fans out there that want to see the new gen version of NHL. So I will do my job, I will get paid for it, and I will satisfy my viewers. Next comment. I hate your opinions. Fuck you. This game is the best. Well, can't argue with that. Last comment. I just want to point out that EA did fix the offsides issue. The only way they still go offsides is that if you make a deke or turn at the blue line, which happens in real life. In the clip that you showed, you deked right before you went into the zone, and your computer realistically went offside. That isn't bad AI, that's bad entry into the offensive zone by you. Alright, perfect. So I've set up a whole presentation here, let's get right to it. This is the reason why they go offside so much on current gen. This is old gen. Now watch the line. Did you see that? Look at JVR hold the line when he's in an offside position. He drags his leg, allowing the puck carrier to stay onside. Now if we do this exact same action on current gen, look what happens. They've taken the hold the line animation out of the game. Now there's an example of two humans. Let's see what the computer does. This is old gen. Look what happens on the right. Look at Phil Kessel. He cuts and holds the line. Watch this play again. We'll slow it down. Kessel cuts at the line and holds himself. You see that animation? That's the computer now we go back to nhl 15 let's see how the computers handle it the exact same situation look at the guy on the right side just drifts into the offensive zone there's no hold the line animation so that's why they go offside so much in this game because they attack the line with the same speed but there's no animation to hold the freaking line in this game all right, boys, so there you go. I wanted to make a video in response to a lot of the comments that I saw in the quick review video. I hope I cleared up anything that I uh, may have left a little confusing in the video. All right, but you guys just got to remember something. I'm just one person. I make these videos from a place where I want the game to be the best that it possibly can be. I use the platform that I've created to voice my opinion in hopes that an EA representative sees this video, but more importantly sees the comment section, because that's their fan base, right down there in the comment section. And they may pick up a good idea or two just from the comments alone in counterpoints to the points that I make in the video. So that's why I do what I do. And you guys gotta remember something, I truly want the NHL game to be considered one of the best games in the world. The world, the entire world. I want it to compete with Call of Duty, Destiny, Halo. I want it to be in that same bracket. I don't want it to be in the sports bracket because that's a cop-out. EA makes all the sports games. It's not an award to be considered the best sports game of, of uh, 2014. All right? So my expectations are very high. And I think you guys want what I want. 
You guys want a game that is considered to be one of the best games in the world. I know you do. It's better for everyone. There's more people online to match up against. More resources get put into the game because more people are buying it. It's just good for everybody who calls himself a Chell gamer. Alright, so that's where I'm coming from. So I hope I cleared up anything and everything for you guys. For Johnny Superb Men and the Great Domsky, take it easy, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>